Today I'm gonna be recording the third video from their series of the recent Boom Arena tournament that happened on the May the 2nd. So, uh, this is the uh, video that's gonna present the games I've played on my second account and uh, to uh, remind you the format once again, the format was that I was playing uh, one hour tournament that was hosted in a Boom Arena clan and whoever got the most wins by doing friendly battles uh, was the winner. Obviously, uh, to be like fair with my uh, own ego, I didn't uh, just uh, win trade on my two accounts, so I was playing actual uh, other players. But then you might have asked, well, if you want to get the most wins during an hour, you kinda have to pretty much queue uh, right away with uh, each and every account every time. So what? Were you playing on two accounts uh, at the same time? And the answer is yes, I was playing on the two accounts at the same time. And that's the uh, gameplay from my second account, which is uh, Boom Home. So, in the first game I was actually playing Vaughn, which uh, turned out to be the most challenging opponent in this tournament. And to not complicate things uh, too much, I was playing with a flying robot, because it's pretty easy to play deck if you have to split attention into two devices. And at the same time, I think it's pretty decent in the meta, because you kinda still have to uh, know how to counter it in order to in order to beat it and uh, not many players are very uh, good at countering flying robot uh, sometimes you just get an unfortunate matchup and you lose instantly and there are any other stuff that are just annoying again uh, when you are facing uh, the flying robot and that's why I decided to play it on two accounts and pretty much hope to get as many quick wins as it's physically possible and uh, pretty much uh, get the win on both accounts. That was the plan and uh, here we are in the game against Vaughn. Uh, maybe I'll start uh, finally commentating it. So basically uh, the uh, double mana started, I played Flying Robot and then uh, I kinda uh, mistimed the uh, T-Rex which is obviously very bad because I pretty much lose a 4 mana card for free and that's absolutely not the thing that you want to see while you're attacking with Flying Robot. Here I got a poison against this gunner but his uh, defense was really resilient, like, I, I've got some damage in a single mana, but it wasn't sufficient to end the game. Uh, I still had to, like, uh, set up some things. Here I've set up actually a Flying Robot on the other side, probably because I wanted to do it on the other account, because right now I don't see the reason why I should ever switch lanes, but uh, yeah, it, it was probably just a either a quick reaction uh, on this account, or I wanted just to play Flying Robot on the other account, so... Pretty funny to see that. Uh, I've got another poison on the gunner. I kinda pressured him into defending that, even though he was pretty chilling. He didn't have to commit that much mana. I think he would have uh, gotten away with a defense without this digger. And still, it is the uh, left side tower that is weaker for him, and that's what he should be protecting and not the right side tower, because uh, after all, he just has to focus the damage with a digger on one tower and here actually I was just busy on the other account not reacting to this gunner at all like uh, usually I wouldn't throw the advantage that easily but uh, fortunately though he committed uh, too much mana on the on the offense and uh, after all I took the tower on the left and won the game and yeah I actually played uh, against Vaughn on this account pretty much. It wasn't like a huge tournament with like uh, 100 or 200 players, not even 50, there was like 10 players, so many games will be like uh, against repeat opponents. Here he actually got the better of me because I thought I'm gonna like just outgrade him, play Shin Skeletons on defense, but he just went all in on the opposite side, which is exactly what you want to do against a flying robot. Here he went with the uh, T-Rex. Uh, I reckon uh, Balloon would be way superior play, but uh, yeah, in hindsight it's very easy to just uh, judge your play, so I would have uh, forced him to play a building or a cyclone or pretty much anything else, he just got a huge value of a poison. I would say the game was pretty even at this point and I was pretty happy about my position because like even though I'm not hard winning, which was obviously my goal, I was just trying to get winning positions on both accounts as soon as it's uh, physically possible. 
to just uh, no, not uh, worry too much because it's way easier to play the position when you just have to sometimes uh, defend, sometimes attack uh, compared to a position where you're just forced to attack because that, that's the uh, moment where you have to kinda make plays, attack and be very focused on one screen and since I had two screens it was just the position I didn't want to uh, partake in. He actually threw a poison here in, on the Viking Tower and that's when I kinda realized, well, uh, I kinda think this man respects himself so he actually given up. I've played a balloon behind this flying robot, I reckon. Yeah, there we go. And uh, from this point forward I just focus on the other screen because this game was over, he kinda given up. Probably wanted to just switch deck and uh, counter me in the next game. And the attempt was surely made, like, I don't want to spoil it, but uh, um, my man Von didn't play Digger Poison against me uh, in the next game, because it's just a very... Um, it's just very weak uh, deck against Flying Robot, you have to be very precise with your counter plays and pretty much on point on defense, and that's just very hard to pull off when you are just uh, getting attacked over and over again. And frankly, I didn't even care too much about defense during this tournament. Usually if I had a an opportunity to base trade, I took it because uh, basically defending is harder than attacking and uh, uh, I wanted just to perform the uh, easiest uh, uh, action on both boards because uh, I would be actually 100% sure I'm doing it right uh, instead of like questioning myself or taking too much time on the board number one while board number two will take the L. So uh, here I actually played a shield skeleton to just mitigate the symmetry. Like I said, it wasn't a perfect defense but was enough uh, for a defense because I defended with uh, four mana less. I took the thousand damage but at the same time I took the mana lead and started to attack with a flying robot so he actually had a t-rex which is absolutely uh, fabulous against uh, uh, flying robot pushes because uh, it's very hard to separate a balloon from a t-rex in this manner that your opponent cannot like uh, also easily kite it all with a building and obviously robo balloon costs 12 mana so um, there's obviously a way to defend it even for a positive trade. Uh, this first attack wasn't that successful in hindsight. I think uh, instead of poisoning the gunner, maybe going for a balloon instantly would have been a better play. But then I believe he had Cyclone, so uh, I would have forced him to play a bit of uh, more mana and I think I would receive even less damage, which is obviously very bad. Here he actually went for a symmetry very aggressively like uh, I understand that principles tell you if your opponent plays flying robot you have to strike uh, on the other side but I just got the footman to counter his uh, symmetry 745. Usually if you can get a poison on this footman and you don't have to worry about uh, this threat ever again it's gonna be a good trade for the symmetry player because like T-Rex and Cycle is pretty broken on defense and uh, that, that wasn't the case here. He was actually planning to uh, like save the cyclone for a uh, for a activation here and poison for a general defense, which is and not the style I play with symmetry, but like uh, he does uh, his uh, plays and apparently they work uh, against um, different opponents, but not against me. So I just set up the another fly robot. I get a perfect splashing uh, T Rex against his troops, but I still uh, got. The poison down. I believe uh, playing Blitz would be way better. His poison got him absolutely uh, infinite value against my troops because I've just played 16 mana in one place and that's usually not good. Here he went with a cemetery once again which I promptly countered with uh, um, with footman and also I even added shield skeletons for whatever reason it definitely wasn't the good play because yeah he, right now he just gets the infinite poison value but right now uh, he just needed to defend both sides and these footmen create enough I mean actually they they create the pressure but they do not force uh, too much because my opponent was kind of late with the response but it kind of forced the attention so he didn't perfectly defend the left side 
and after all I took the win. So that was the another game against uh, Vayne and right now we are gonna move the, to the game against Tagishin. So I actually played against Tagishin uh, on my main account and it was my first game of the tournament and uh, I wouldn't say it was smooth sailing because I kinda picked the wrong deck, you can check it in the uh, second video of this series, like mini series, it's not like too long but at the same time I definitely think it's worth watching because uh, if you don't know how to play Flying Robot, that's definitely a nice guide. I uh, also commentate on which plays are good and which plays are bad when you have to like pay more attention and where when you can just uh, chill back, relax and wait for your opponent to make the decision. Because pretty much Flying Robot is uh, about, uh, well, uh, I'm gonna be playing flying cards and most of the cards in the game don't shoot up. So uh, how uh, will you uh, like... What will you do against the, against this fact? And he played a Devil Horde right here, which was absolutely valid play. I was definitely late with this blitz, and that's why I'm not taking the tower down. But Devil Horde will be a very menacing card uh, till the end of the game. I kind of had to remember that uh, Tagishna was actually using it, and that's why I pretty much cannot uh, ever again push with my. Uh, flying robot loon uh, combo unless I have either a T-Rex in the mix or a poison at the ready Preferably even blitz because if my uh, Balloon gets targeted by the devils it's gonna be very useful to just retarget it and hopefully they will retire to flying robots so uh, Here he actually went apes which was absolutely uh, interesting move. I, I mean, I kind of uh, get it that uh, you're down in the damage uh, by a lot and you kind of want to come back, but at the same time, you know, I have footmen uh, on hand because I've countered your first apes with uh, the footmen and that was just a 5 4 5. Yeah, I take some damage, but uh, for a ro robot player, that's definitely uh, worth it just to take some damage to just create flash. Uh, to create pressure on both lanes. Here he played Machine Gun and uh, I was definitely busy on the other screen because uh, this Machine Gun uh, should have been taken care of way quicker. Now I play Footman, probably sitting at 10 mana because uh, I reckon I was leaking some. And here he kinda entered the chaotic part. Uh, I kinda just start spamming everything at his Viking Tower because even uh, though he could uh, like counter fly me, it was the Viking Tower that's more valuable to defend at this position. And yeah, I just took his Viking Tower, got a quicker win and had more attention to play on the other board. Here I actually played uh, against Dario155. Uh, 155 to be exact and uh, from his first two cards 3-4 actually I was pretty damn sure that he's playing a default deck then he played a steel hammer under confirmation and uh, yeah I guess default deck the, uh, the game style kinda has to change because pretty much you cannot push into a bomberman so you uh, either play a flying robot in the back then force out bomberman on the flying robot and uh, then you go uh, with the balloon on the opposite side, that's one way to play it. And the second way is uh, if they don't play Bomberman because they want to face, uh, like, uh, play the Bomberman on your balloon, uh, you kind of just play a uh, flying robot with support cards. And uh, unfortunately, archers and stone phones are not sufficient to defend a flying robot. And uh, that's like the second idea of this deck. Obviously, you can defend. Uh, Everything in this deck. The most two annoying cards I reckon are um, Steel Hammer and Bone Blaster. So Bone Blasters are the two mana win condition card, and you uh, won't be always like ready with the uh, correct response. So sometimes you just have to like let them go and kind of be ready that. Uh, each and every of your tower can uh, survive for full connections, like uh, 8 from each Bone Blaster, but like if we count it as a pair, uh, it can survive for uh, uh, four blasts. So uh, you kinda have to uh, time your attacks and make them be more efficient that, uh, than your opponent just playing randomly Bone Blasters at the bridge, because like 
With like robot, you usually want to like tower trade instead of like spend all the game by defending because you don't have too good of a card that uh, trade well on defense. You just want to go make uh, value with your cards and pretty much win the game with that. Uh, in that way. Another uh, tough card for me to play against is a Steel Hammer uh, because I pretty much don't have a good response against it. Usually the best response against a, a Steel Hammer will be a Helicopter, uh, just chipping away, but you will still receive a one hit and if you want to like prevent all the hits from the Steel Hammer you will have to like surround it with Shield Skeletons or with Footman and it's already not a good trade because even though like Helicopter is more expensive uh, than Shield Skeletons in this case. Uh, you definitely would rather like take uh, down the Bone Blasters with a Helicopter instead of uh, Shield Skeletons because Helicopter counter attacks and gets you value on the offense while Shield Skeletons like die trying to stop the Steel Hammer and right here right now I shouldn't definitely uh, like allow him to take this tower down because uh, well uh, obviously it uh, kinda brought him back into the game. I obviously just played 10 mana at the bridge as soon as I got back to this board and uh, that was because I was busy with the other board. I reckon I was playing uh, against Vaughn right then um, on my main account and here I just uh, quickly clutched the win because his tower was just very low so that was a very fortunate one. He didn't even play Bomberman once which kinda confused me because Bomberman is absolute beast against flying robot decks. Here he actually plays a Bomberman first place so that was a kinda uh, a tip for me that he probably didn't change his deck and played a default deck once again and here you probably guys can see that my helicopter is busy with dealing with steel hammer. Uh, I couldn't play it higher because pretty much Bomberman would uh, take care of it and uh, my my flying robot disappeared because it just wasn't uh, sufficiently supported. Here I went with a balloon because I was like thinking well he kinda wasted a lot of mana right here on this attack like this mother devil didn't get value these bomb blasters got deleted immediately so I was like well why shouldn't I take this tower without a flying robot. Sometimes it's also very important with a uh, flying robot decks uh, to know that you kinda have to uh, tower trade and uh, you don't have like tower trade with whole flying robot plus balloon push, it's like the uh, stubborn way if your bond won't break, it's usually what you want to set up over and over again, but if your opponent dies to balloon, you should play a balloon because you like pretty much don't have to commit the 7 mana tank which is expensive, does pretty much nothing and uh, only just allows your opponent your balloon to connect your opponent's tower. So if you can, you should be playing balloons like naked or with footman or with uh, T-Rex. If your opponent cannot hold that because for instance he has like crucial counters out of cycle, you should definitely go for that because just Robo Loom deck is uh, definitely about attack. Next game I've played against Jay, who I believe after this game actually quit the tournament for whatever reason. And uh, since he was zero medals and played like three characteristic cards, I probably just realized that he's playing a default deck as well. Uh, and so the uh, playstyle would be very similar. But then he showed up with a uh, skeleton horde and the twins, which I was very confused about. I probably shouldn't even blitz here, like played another support card, but I was like, I want to just cycle back to my flying robot and blitz was the cheapest option, so that was definitely the way, uh, the one way to go. He played a Bomberman against my flying robot and since I don't want to have the headache uh, over this uh, Bomberman splashing my troops or balloon or something, I just poisoned it and if I remember correctly, yeah, I've, I've just played balloon here, even though it may be very risky because Steelhammer is uh, coming down the lane and stuff, uh, yeah, I, I've just tower traded here. Uh, this steel hammer was uh, being stopped by my shield skeletons, I just uh, allowed it to connect to my tower and then I kinda counter it, that's a one Another way to defend with flying robot, you kinda, you don't have the cards that trade perfectly against many opponent's cards, so you kinda have to use a tower as a resource, like treat it as a 
extra mana bar. So for instance, if your opponent like has splash cards, you don't have to try to counter it with your swarm cards like footman or shield skeletons. Just allow their splash cards to lock onto your tower first and then counter it with a swarm card because uh, Right now, first of all, you took the trades, second of all, uh, your uh, troops are alive and are creating a pressure and this pressure will force more mana from your opponent, which they won't be able to uh, use on defense and if they won't be able to use on defense, uh, your balloon push will just take the tower as shown uh, in the example. It's two tower down um, for my opponent. Um, and yeah, th this game was pretty over very early. Uh, I reckon I just went for a 3 star in this game because that's pretty much uh, what you want to do with uh, Flying Robot anyway. Uh, or... Okay, uh, so... Uh, I kinda was uh, treating this game as a game 1, so I just didn't uh, address this game for a pretty quite a while. So yeah, I've dropped a tower, but it was not enough for him to come back, fortunately. Uh, sometimes it just happens, I... Oh, and there goes the screen lock. Uh, yeah, I just uh, sometimes have to split the attention between uh, two games and... Uh, yeah, sometimes things like these uh, will just come out because I'm not like 100% uh, perfect at multitasking and I reckon no one is, but uh, I've just done my best and... Uh, fortunately, it wasn't like the game-changing play. Uh, he played a... Okay, next opponent will be Von. So, uh, I actually played uh, Von uh, on my second account. Uh, I mean, this is my second account, so on the first account before. And he already pulled this deck, so I was kinda aware of uh, what I'm facing already. And I was kinda ready that he's gonna be playing this uh, very difficult to beat the deck for a flying robot. Because he simply has a perfect spells, which is poison and bullets, absolutely shredding everything that uh, I have uh, for the air. Uh, and at the same time he had three air cards, so it's already a very good uh, way for fighting. And he had mortar, which is a good counter to my uh, balloon, because it tanks two shots and uh, at the same time it forces something for defense, because if I don't defend, I just uh, receive these uh, free shells. But they're not free if my balloon connects, and it absolutely did. My opponent was just very low on mana, so he couldn't play bullets earlier, and... Uh, Unfortunately for him, fortunately for me, we get the hit and pretty much reset the position. At this point I was thinking like, yeah, we got this about the same damage on the same side and uh, usually the same side uh, damage uh, favors the uh, robot player, but uh, not in this scenario because I was kinda so on my previous account that he can stop my pushes perfectly, so I had to still focus. Here I actually played a shield skeletons to uh, uh, just cycle to my flying robot, but he played a uh, super ape at the exact same time, and since I didn't want to like add anything to the defense, I uh, had to receive one super ape hit, uh, I mean two super ape hits even, and then a uh, mortar hit. That was actually very uh, fortunate, because my uh, opponent kinda... Uh, um, played a mortar into my um, shield skeletons. And then I absolutely obliterated his tower out of nowhere because um, I, I don't know what honestly happened to him, but uh, his defense absolutely collapsed. Here I was kind of treating this game as a game one, which was absolutely a horrendous mistake. Like, if, if, I mean, he didn't end up losing me the game, fortunately, spoiler alert, but. Uh, uh, you shouldn't be playing that aggressive even if you're winning because that's exactly what your opponent wants uh, at this uh, position, like uh, any chance of winning and fortunately I was having perfect responses for his um, for his aggression and this uh, pl play kinda paid off but it definitely weren't best traits and if you're even or behind in the game you definitely shouldn't play like this. Even if you're ahead you shouldn't play like this. But I was in a pretty bizarre situation where I kinda had to split my attention so I think it was okay for me. Here he actually got away with a pretty sneaky devil that will be a reoccurring uh, theme in this matchup because I don't have really a good way to deal with these devils so after like I counter uh, his super ape with footman you would uh, say like I take minus one trade but I create pressure but he 
then kinda just can counter this pressure with just devils and I cannot do anything about it, because if I ever overextend, I just die to another super ape or mortar, so uh, it was kinda a painful one. I then play a helicopter to just mitigate the super ape, it's not the perfect play, but uh, I kinda uh, figured out through practice that is the best play in this particular matchup, because if I want to have like any chance, uh, I just have to base trade and here he mistimed his bullets which is very painful for him I got the balloon to the tower and take it down and uh, that's pretty much the best position I ever uh, got uh, in this matchup in single mana because right now I just have to hang on to this tower and not die so I uh, play uh, shield skeletons to protect uh, my tower from the mortar I played a blitz on this mortar because I had to cycle one card to this helicopter and I reckon I didn't have uh, a better response here. I was pretty regretting cycling blitz because it would be absolutely perfect to uh, stop these devils but at the same time you kinda have to remember that you're playing a flying grovel so you can, uh, cannot overcome it. And he just plays a super ape at the bridge and I uh, lose the tower instantly because it wasn't him that played poison, it was actually my poison. I know you cannot distinguish colors in this game and that's why I have to add it but uh, I was just trying to quick play the footman and I quick played the poison so that was a pretty significant blunder on my part here. Uh, Definitely not proud of this play, but in this position, I would say uh, in the opposite side uh, scenario, uh, my deck has the advantage, but uh, another thing is that he has the matchup advantage, so I was like, well, I don't know who has uh, the true advantage, like mathematically, sorry for the notification once again, and yeah, I was kinda just curious on how to play this one and I definitely misplayed it in this position because his super ape like gets to my tower and even though I have the flying robot right now I've just gotten rid of uh, every single troop that was good against devils like obviously I should be uh, holding a T-Rex against that one here he actually finds a brilliant defense which is like kiting flying robot for the mortar and then countering my uh, balloon with two uh, air troops which was uh, I mean anti-air troops which was absolutely brilliant here, here I had to stop the devil and here I actually wanted to just uh, go for the gunner but he played a swordsman uh, kinda predicting my uh, shield skeleton so definitely good play on his part just protecting his gunner and squeezing just enough value to make it work and here I played footman on the mortar thinking I'm gonna get away with a sneaky one, but uh, yeah, it, it didn't work out. Uh, he played Super Ape, got enough damage to just absolutely lock the game. Here he played actually even Devils, I played Blitz just to get one hit, and even I know, even though I knew it wasn't enough, uh, I kinda just wanted to make the statement that I'm fighting till the end, and unfortunately there was no hit. Uh, Super Ape didn't hit as well, but it didn't have to, he just played it to force me out on defense and that was the sufficient play to end the game. Unfortunately Vaughn took this game and uh, in the second video of this series I have more losses against him so if you struggle against uh, Flying Crobot yourself you can definitely try to copy his deck and copy his playstyle and try to like counter it. So here I decided that uh, since I'm gonna be playing against Vaughn anyway because he was very quickly like joining every single uh, battle request of mine on either account. Uh, I was pretty sure that he's gonna be thinking like, I'm very confident, I have a matchup and I'm gonna just win it. And I was kinda tired of losing at this point, so I've just switched to a general and uh, I didn't have time for maths of uh, how to, uh, what's the best mathematical option to counter his deck. But I figured if I go with something comfortable, which is, uh, also like not susceptible to his plan, I'm gonna be pretty uh, fine. And I figured that, well, I, I can just go general because it's one of my most comfortable decks. And at the same time, it's kinda a good deck to calling out bullshit because if your opponent kinda plays a weird deck, uh, I have a very uh, clear and concrete plan that I can execute both in single and double. And uh, with that being said, I was kinda, uh, 
finding myself in a very good position. Here I actually misplayed the Super Devil, even though I killed his Super Devil, it would have been, fi would have been fine if I were to kill it uh, while it was still killing General, but I was just too late, I was too low on mana and I shouldn't have made this play. Um, it turned out to be fine because he didn't uh, turn out to be that uh, far ahead on mana uh, after all these exchanges, but uh, it wasn't like uh, the dream case scenario for me. Here I actually allowed this mortar to lock onto the tower so I can counter his uh, counter his uh, super ape and do not worry about mortar absolutely blasting my phones and uh, here he absolutely equalized the game. So. Uh, I wouldn't say that the uh, Super Devil was a game ending mistake, but it was uh, definitely a uh, one uh, one way to just throw, throw the advantage that I had, because uh, this Super Devil definitely didn't help out uh, on the offense. So, I've just set up with my general composition for this matchup, which is General Drunker and Super Devil pretty much trying to achieve anything. Here he played Super Ape into my Super Devil, so Devils were sufficient enough to uh, counter it. Very important interaction to know is that, de uh, I mean, Fawns by themselves do not counter, uh, do not counter a, a Super Ape, but if they receive any, uh, like, help, maybe except the heal tiny, it's gonna be enough. Sorry once again for my uh, the screen lock. Uh, I believe it's gonna happen about a uh, couple more times in this game. Here he actually got a very close to me uh, by almost catching up uh, on damage, but I was pretty comfortable at this point because uh, I was pretty much <coughs> three flying bombs away from finishing him as well, or getting flying bomb with a uh, with a uh, general blast and uh, this mortar didn't help him on defense it went straight for the tower which probably is what he expected but at the same time he needed this damage on this general to stay alive in this one so uh, in this game i actually joined someone's game because if you like uh, record the replay uh, the host which is like home uh, goes to the bottom and uh, the uh, away party which joins the replay is at the top so here I'm gonna be actually playing uh, kinda uh, from the reverse so I'm at the top like you see boom home and my opponent will be playing three gunners which is very challenging uh, matchup for my general even though I have a flying bomb I didn't feel like super comfortable because I wasted already my flying bomb so I was like well I have to just buckle up for defense and basically try to survive here was already back to a flying bomb but I still was kind of hoping that he's gonna give me more value and uh, he absolutely delivered by handing uh, me one more gunner so that was pretty cute for him uh, then I played general in the back, which turned out to be an absolute blunder because uh, if your opponent has three gunners, he pretty much wants to uh, take a very good trade on defense and then counter push on both lanes, and that's pretty much what I've uh, gone for. Uh, if I don't have a flying bomb on offense, I pretty much uh, shouldn't ever uh, play a general because he's gonna just absolutely counter me, like here, and he's gonna have the counter push. I, I mean. If, if you were to have right here like twins or any uh, semi-decent win condition, I believe I would be absolutely toast, but fortunately his deck was kinda suboptimal, so that this kinda saved me in this game because, uh, yeah, I will, like, I will remind you that I was still playing on two counts and I was kinda trying to settle for the simplest plan to just um, be able to execute it over and over again. I figured like setting up generals in the back kinda seems simple because you kinda uh, set up a win condition in the back and then have 18 free seconds where you can just uh, make decisions on the other board and then you have to go back and basically spam everything at the bridge and hopefully win. So here I got a flying bomb uh, on the board but and I actually spammed some cards because I was pretty sure that my support cards uh, will get uh, to his gunner line, but they didn't, and that was very 
stuff so I was basically in trouble right here I was kind of scared that he's gonna just split a three gunners in the back and win the game right off the bat because uh, he was definitely having a mana advantage he was having a card rotation advantage and I was pretty much like clueless uh, of what I'm gonna do I was pretty sure actually I'm gonna lose this game so I just uh, try to figure out uh, any plan that will uh, hopefully work I was like well I'm gonna hit him on the other side uh, he's not gonna see that coming and he absolutely saw that coming with not the perfect defense but two hits was still not enough for me so I uh, saw the two gunners coming down the uh, right lane for me it was left but like for the simplicity of the recording it was left so I just hit him on the opposite side and fortunately for me he was just way too late with three gunners and even though these three gunners would uh, like uh, proceed to counter push I don't think three gunners are good uh, with con while counter pushing if they don't have like a good staple uh, which is like I don't know explore, wins, brute, anything to tank for them and especially when they're on one HP you just have to tank for them and it was just not uh, the case for Mika Carter and it was just uh, last 10 seconds uh, nothing too special in fact I've managed to uh, take the tower somehow which kinda uh, turned out to be fine for me because uh, I could uh, like enter another game uh, faster because there was no like time wasted for the tie break which kinda revealed the already known winner. Then I was uh, pretty much sure on this account that uh, Evain was playing all against my main account which well uh, it wasn't a good matchup right there but right here I could switch uh, to a flying robot uh, once again and I uh, got against Nika Carter once again who by the first looks was just playing a very standard viking bridge spam and then he showed up cyclone which already made me like suspicious of his deck and i definitely was right about being suspicious because uh, spoiler alert there were there was some suspicious picks like it's not the standard uh, viking bridge spam and there it is so my opponent was actually playing the uh, the Chiba Chase variation, which kinda uh, contains a um, Cyclone, Necromancer, and a Mirror. So, uh, kinda wild picks, but they uh, surprisingly work out for him. Chiba Che himself is pretty much, uh, I would say, a consistent uh, top player for two seasons in Boom Arena already. So, definitely his influence may have spread uh, even to this tournament, which, uh, well, I, I wasn't surprised uh, about. It's, it's just uh, funny to address that it wasn't like the original uh, Viking Bridge spam, but it was uh, the Chiba Chase variation instead, because you kind of have to apply the different playstyle you cannot like just hammer your way into your opponent because a necromancer is absolute beast against a flying robot and if you play a, a flying robot without like a good support the necromancer then will turn every single robot up into a uh, ape and uh, like launch a devastating counter push but in this game i got a very good prediction like i got a uh, footman on his necromancer and was enough to bring him down and then i faced von again uh, once again on boom home but then i was pretty sure that uh, since he knew that i switched to the deck that counters uh, the counter to my deck well it, it's like uh, counters 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 but uh, I hope that you get what I'm saying uh, actually I don't know maybe oh okay yeah so uh, now I now I remember the mind team I actually switched to a general drunker once again against Bond because I was uh, pretty sure that uh, he actually will be uh, playing his uh, anti uh, entire uh, robot deck and if he didn't I was pretty sure I'm gonna win with general anyway uh, unless he just switched to a 100 o counter uh, I was pretty sure that it's gonna be a very easy game so I just played a with a general now I was sure that he's gonna come to this account uh, and yeah uh, just watch what happens uh, can here uh, to counter the super ape he actually gets his Devils Alive, which I was not proud of, probably should have played a Footman Keg one time lower. Here I actually was doing something else 
on the other screen, so this mortar got way too much value for its cost. Uh, I went with a general and uh, drunker at the bridge. This is pretty much one of the easiest way to of attacking your opponent. Obviously, it can be very easy stopped, and if it gets stopped, it's a 10 mana commitment, so you will be in a big trouble. But I got some damage from it, so I was pretty uh, proud of it. Uh, then I just went for this gunner because I kind of knew he's gonna protect it uh, anyway. And then he pulled out bullets, which was very scary moment for me, uh, especially if this gunner would survive, I would have to play very kinda risky footman kek, and uh, yeah, that would be just a very scary position, but uh, fortunately for me, everything turned out to be fine, here I thought I actually have the super devil in range of my tower, but I didn't, so I just played flying bomb to eliminate the threats, he kinda stopped this general, which was definitely a good play for him, because if you're out of mortar, if you have mortar out of cycle, you don't want to defend the general, you just want to stop it as soon as possible. Here I uh, didn't like fully counter super ape, it was a conscious decision. I played a drunker, which I was 100% sure it's gonna counter attack right after that. This flying move was to predict devils, but uh, actually he didn't play devils early enough. Uh, he got some damage on my general, but uh, his own stuff was pretty much dead. Uh, while this flying bomb came down and uh, Super Devil was there to clean up the devil, so it was pretty decent attack I would say, obviously tra taking 3 stars, sorry once again for the screen lock, but uh, uh, yeah. My opponent uh, Von kinda uh, was uh, very respectful to me in this kind of manner, that uh, when he knew he lost, he kinda just instantly quit and allowed himself to get 3 crowned, uh, because he kinda knew he uh, if he doesn't have a chance to win a game, he just has to reset and start the another game for himself to increase his chances of winning the tournament. Um, and that's what he did. He actually uh, picked a counter to my uh, general deck right here. I would say like, uh, I don't know what would be my pick if I were to counter a general drunker, probably a 3 gunner deck. Like I've said, very solid uh, if you know what you're doing. Uh, but uh, this uh, Digger, uh, Bone Blaster, Spiercing Archer, Cyclone deck, uh, known also as Remy Ellis deck, uh, it's very solid against a general and I definitely like this pick. Uh, only thing is you kinda have to be uh, careful because this deck definitely doesn't work in this game uh, as it works in the uh, similar clone of Boom Arena. So uh, I kinda predicted his piercing archer here because like uh, every single uh, Remy Ali's player plays exactly the same and that was the case here as well. Here he actually surprised me with a surprisingly clean defense. Uh, I kinda expected that I'm gonna get a drunker to his tower and get some damage uh, and I was allowed uh, here to uh, kinda uh, ignore the digger. Here I played a heal tiny which was kinda late because I wanted to get it off the swordsman but it turned out to be fine because it healed my support troops like a super devil and uh, footman kek and that was pretty much the attack that sealed the deal because after that uh, after that I am tower uh, up and uh, since he has to be like aggressive I can play things like this so I don't have to like 100% uh, uh, defend this digger because I still have HP to spare on uh, my left side tower and I used uh, the uh, advantageous mana that I've got from this defense to plus 2 to be precise to play a drunker, so technically speaking, I've played this drunker for 4 mana. I've predicted one more piercing archer because it's very predictable play of the Remy Ali players. Then I've played another drunker, kinda misplayed it uh, because I wanted it to go for a tower and not go for the Viking tower. And after that play, I, yeah, I believe he just gave up because, like I've said, Bonnie kinda understood what this tournament is about. If you don't have a chance to win a game, you just instantly quit and queue for the next one to increase your chances uh, of winning and not uh, decrease your pawns because yeah, that, that's how this game works. So next game was against Dario 155, like I've said it was very uh, small tournament, uh, but with pretty decent type score I would say. He played a flying robot at the bridge which is the play I definitely do not agree with because it, it's just bad. Like robot only is good if you can support it with like either 
uh, either flying cards or a, a or a win condition like balloon. So it, it was definitely not the play here. Uh, play a flying robot at the bridge especially into my super devil i didn't it wasn't like that uh, it was flying robot at the bridge hoping to get some chip damage uh, it was <laughs> it was flying robot into my uh, into my super devil and another very huge blunder playing another uh, air wind condition into my super devil giving me like extra value and i didn't even have to split the uh, defenses anymore because he just gave me a a free range of motion uh, to assemble the attack. I would say very nice missile, like hitting everything. But I was all over uh, at this point since, uh, yeah, I've just got the tower. Uh, he's definitely down mana, especially after playing these archers. I definitely knew that during the game. And if I remember correctly, I just cycled some cards and started another attack. Yeah. So I needed to cycle phones here. Uh, obviously they would be on time and uh, delete uh, all the archers uh, damage. Well, I was kinda splitting attention and here actually was a pretty bad play from me because uh, first of all I should have respected this mini push more and second of all I should have cleared all the skeletons and kinda let the T-Rex connect to the tower because otherwise I just was uh, forced kinda to sack this tower because uh, General player, uh, I mean general deck is like uh, not a beatdown deck, it's more of a control deck, but it kind of has a beatdown theme. So if you have the opportunity to a uh, tower trade, you definitely should, because in two tower or three tower scenario, you will be better than your opponent. Uh, so yeah, I was just uh, setting up at this point for defense, because like I said, I kind of was trying to uh, make the practical best plays, which is like, uh, get the advantage on the board, uh, uh, kind of uh, relieve the uh, thinking tension and uh, just uh, focus on the second board, which was probably harder position than this one. So. I got a very convincing 3-star uh, at the, the end, uh, after uh, very quickly reacting to his Skeleton Horde, and after that I actually faced Tagishn, so Tagishn uh, wasn't having too brilliant of a tournament, and against my Flying Robot he played a Flying Robot uh, at the bridge, well, uh, do I really have to commentate on that play? I probably already said that it was not the best uh, play in my opinion, uh, especially because I could have just countered with a helicopter. I've added a bonus shield skeletons because I don't really want to uh, get too much damage. And here I actually got caught off guard uh, by a devil horde. So it wasn't the previous game against Tagishin, but this one where he had a devil horde in the deck. And yeah, devil horde definitely complicates things because uh, you cannot just play. Uh, uh, flying robot and balloon straight away because once the devil horde gets put on the board and you don't have a response against that These devils deal a lot of damage and you definitely cannot ignore it like it's it's a uh, 12 against 5 straight which uh, I'm pretty sure that like a uh, flying robot player gets only one balloon hit after this trade and uh, Your opponent gets 7 mana so that's <laughs> That's a fun uh, way to just lose the game instantly. Here I actually made another mistake, so the play was correct, but the execution was wrong. Like I've said, many uh, things will be following this theme in this game, because uh, again, I had to split the attention across the multiple uh, accounts. And uh, yeah, uh, I played a uh, T-Rex, just T-Rex against the Flank Robot and Shield Skeletons, and I hope that T-Rex will splash the Shield Skeletons and Flank Robot. But unfortunately, Shield Skeletons moved uh, a bit more forward, and my uh, T-Rex uh, was uh, wa was just attacking Flank Robot. Like it didn't uh, redirect into a Shield Skeleton, so I just sucked a tower for absolutely no reason. Definitely a mistake. And at the same time, he cleaned up my push with a Devil Horde, I would say he could be even more uh, brave and uh, played a Devil Horde way earlier, but he was pre playing it pretty cautiously. Here he chucked the tower because he pretty much probably thought that he's getting somewhere with his attack with a Dark Knight and then Apes, 
but yeah, it, it, it wasn't the case. I was just stacking my troops, even though I stacked pretty much a half of the Viking Tower. I was very fine with this trade. Then I had a Blitz for the Devil Horde, and even though uh, Devil Horde trades well against uh, air cards, if they're on the 1 HP, it's pretty much all in vain because. Uh, yeah, and they are just getting one shot. Here he played the loan, which I believe got actually one hit. No, I, it actually didn't because I was uh, first with a 3 star and yeah. That was the game, uh, that was actually the last game of this tournament uh, for my main... Wait, that, that was my second account, yeah. I, I have recorded the main account yesterday and today's I was recording the uh, games for the second account. I actually managed to get 15 wins, which is very impressive, especially that I've played 16 games on uh, each account. So I was uh, always occupied on the two accounts at the same time. And yeah, that, that's gonna be it for today's video. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy this type of content and uh, if I should make more of these uh, long gameplay videos in the future. And yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe. And uh, I'm gonna see you guys in the next episode of Marina.